Well, welcome back to Hope Harbor Zoo, everyone. I know it's been quite some time since we've actually stopped in here and actually taken a look at what everything has really been going on back here. But I'm super excited to say that we are actually making some very good progress in here. Although most of it is not in this map, it's actually in another one. But we'll check that out in a little bit. But as we know, uh, the 1.12 or 1.11 update, 1.11... Uh, actually messed up some prop mods and because of that I was not able to do much building inside of this zoo uh, so a lot of the flexi color things got messed up we could see that a lot with um I'm trying to find like actually where it really happened let's actually check out over here at South America uh, you'll actually see a lot of the flexi color values that got messed up especially with these like fences that I made over here you'll see that they reverted back to the original ones I still got to go through and fix out all of that, but for the most part, everything kind of made it by just okay. Uh, again, some small minor things, like again, with these fences, it's like not much I can really do. I just have so many in here. I kind of want to redo this building anyways. It's South America, um, and I don't really like the blocky style of everything. I kind of want to make it more organic, but we should probably talk about the newest additions over here rather than look at the old stuff. Uh, so, ZSU is finally back and fully operational. Breeding is going on, we got all that fun stuff, we've gotten a lot of really fun babies so far, we've gotten a lot of new really cool animals so far, so over here I actually have a seabird aviary, and I have to give a huge shout out to Squatch for this, no, I think it's Ginger, I think it's Ginger who made this aviary. It's a really beautiful one, and I was like, you know what, I just want to put, like, my eiders and my kitty wakes in here. So that's exactly where they went in here, nothing really too insane. Uh, but no, I was just super excited to get all that. So we had a few events, so I'll just pop up what I have from the Seabird event right over here. It was like a waterfowl event. So that was really awesome. Uh, but yeah, we were essentially just tasked with showing off what we've been doing in our zoo to uh, really take into account, like, you know, bird welfare, local bird welfare and stuff like that. So that was super fun. I also built for my Rhode Island red chickens, which came from, I believe, Wolf. Wolf of Anarchy. Very cool person right over there. Uh, and I was even able to sneak in that little map of Rhode Island that's in uh, Nick's kind of hidden prop pack. So that's kind of fun right there. But besides that, uh, some things got deleted. So you'll see over here, uh, the roofs over here kind of got the snap. Um, because they were the wrong flexi color channel. I kind of got rid of their entire holding for the moose back here. I got to make them a new one because they honestly really deserve it. And I would like for them to have a beautiful, nice holding facility. But for the most part, everything for the most part is okay. Again, we, we have some small issues with like this wood texture. Um, it reverted back to an older color of it, so now it's bright blue instead of that brown that I wanted. But I think I'll kind of figure that out later, once I actually do start to get some more North American animals. But what most of the things happening on Hope Harbor are, right over here and right over here. So number one, right off the bat, we have Island of Color slowly but surely getting everything to be back the way it was. So, of course, we have this beautiful, beautiful um, kind of railing. I was super proud of this, just getting, like, that color uh, scale going. And which, by the way, I could actually add the Bennett's Wallabies in here officially, so that's very fun. Um, but, yeah, so we have those guys in here. Um, I have the aviary right over here. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this yet, but this is essentially our Island of Color aviary. Kind of modeled after Franklin Park Zoo's... Um, kind of aviary but I still got to work on this I'm not totally set on it and then again you'll see that we have some of the same issues with these um d the ropes up there so I'm not really particularly too sold on those just yet again we also have the interior of island of color this is a micro house which again this is going to get a huge huge facelift once I'm actually able to again I think this served its purpose way back in the day but unfortunately, as time goes on, our collection gets bigger and our standards do too. Uh, so I'm like, okay, I want to get this actually looking nice. I do like this big atrium though. I want to figure out how to retain that. 
but most of the changes that you'll see is right over here so of course we had the national parks event we have all those lovely animals from the island of sumatra and i've already started to build for some of them but i do want to start making these into speed builds again just to have you guys focus on this series a little bit more i know it's been a while since we've actually seen it but over here i did get started on this tiger habitat unfortunately we can't really see the tigers right now so let's keep on going it is kind of based off of like a nice uh kind of like southeast asian temple i'm going very vague with the theming over here uh, so I'm keeping it rel relatively basic, relatively vanilla, uh, but I hope you guys still enjoy it nonetheless. You can see I got really comfortable with like a lot of the plants throughout here, so I'm using um, the Yorkshire Fog Grass. I think that's really it in there. Uh, I built this before the Grasslands pack actually came out, so that's very interesting to see. Like the influence of the pieces and stuff like that. I don't think the tigers are actually in here. Oh, yep, they are. So they're back here. Obviously, they're just chilling. Again, I, I gotta update my remasters because the eyes got fixed. Uh, but what else do we have? I started building like the Indonesia house. So this would pretty much be like a whole bunch of Indonesian animals. So in here, I would have fishing cat. Though I'm debating actually putting the fishing cat in here. So I think I might keep it outside. I think that might be a better solution anyways. But you start making your way throughout here. You actually get to look at some of the squirrels. So I have Previs squirrels and I also have uh, Plantain squirrels, which were actually very fun to uh, kind of get my way into getting those because they're only kept in one facility in America. I just like having like the rare species more than the big ones. Uh, speaking of big ones, I also have large flying fox. So this is their entire enclosure. Uh, it's relatively big. Um, obviously, I would like to make a flying fox mod. But unfortunately, bat modding really isn't too keen of a thing for now. But eventually, I'll probably figure it out. Just make sure that we're able to actually achieve that first. Before I start, you know, dabbling into the models and stuff. And plus, I gotta update all my mods. I'm about halfway through updating them all. Uh, of course, the first half is so much easier because the fish didn't break. So I'm just updating their pages and, like, their icons first. Uh, and then it's the rest of the stuff that's gonna be very fun to update um speaking of that we also have our african penguins in here i have so many of them look at them go so these guys are breeding like crazy so they're actually able to afford me some very cool animals in trade of them so it's very cool just to be able to do that but i still love how this overpass still works kind of uh, obviously once you're under here you kind of see through the water uh so that kind of sucks but once you actually do look up here, you could actually see them crossing over. In case if you guys haven't seen this, this is like just a little free build building. Uh, originally, you can actually walk under that. And actually, if you put down like a keeper or something, so I'll just put down an educator right there. You could actually see that they are able to walk under that, which I think is just super cool. And then that allows them to come over to this section over here. I always find that so cool just that they're able to traverse between the two areas but again i just said that this is only half of the updates that we have in hope harbor um the other half i'm actually going to bring us to right now so without further ado i'll meet you guys right over there so i've been doing a little off camera building uh welcome everyone this is the hope harbor aquarium uh, we are currently working with a lot of different moving pieces in here, so please bear with me while I kind of explain everything. Uh, I should actually start us out over here. So recently, uh, the store happened, and it was a domestic store. And I think it was Tiger Drake who was very generous to say uh, you guys could get basically a whole bunch of different things. Um, you could get... Uh, domestic dogs, you could get minks, you could get cats, you could get hoofstock. Uh, but one of the things I saw in there were isopods. Uh, because, as always, Hope Harbor Zoo loves their small animals. So I kind of looked at this and I was like, huh, that's interesting. And it wasn't until he mentioned that you could get uh, about two for the price of half a token. So you could get four for one token. And I was like, oh... This, this is guys this is so interesting so you can see i kind of bought about 20 of them 
Uh, and you could actually see that we made the ISO podcast room. Uh, this was a fun little project that I had over here because I was debating getting these because obviously I need a lot more animals for like my North America section. I need a lot more animals. I wanted like a Maine Coon too, like the cat. And I was like, oh man, I want some of this stuff. But then I thought, Isopod, Isopodcast. And it was that pun alone that got me to buy all of them. So <laughs> I got, have over 20 different breeds of Isopods in here, each one with its own little unique tank. And let's actually, let's actually pop in here for a little bit, um, just to actually get a better look at some of the details. Uh, I'll talk all about what's happening over there, too. But you can see each habitat is so different from the last one. Not really so different, but it's working with a whole bunch of different, like, pieces in here. So, it's very interesting. And, of course, I have, like, all these small decorations up here. I thought that was super fun to have. We even have, like, the little isopod plushie up there. We have Nick up there, who is generous enough to lend us a logo. And, of course, it's kind of set up like a real podcast. So, when you're in the zoo, you could actually see that the isopodcast is probably going on and it's just a couple of zookeepers kind of talking about like you know what's happening at Hope Harbor Zoo maybe some stories they have uh, say for example today we have guest uh, guest speaker uh, Jim Brahini in the zoo just to talk about his experience so I thought that was super fun to have right over there so that was like one of the best things I've ever made for Hope Harbor but this is also pretty cool so we have a whole lot of different moving parts over to the left we actually do have our amazon section we'll talk a little bit more as we go through the tour we do have these beautiful tylosaurus statues by doc and giorno so i really wanted to have a nice centerpiece kind of hanging up over there and i also do have the touch pool uh newly remastered by the way uh and then you start to walk over here and i'm gonna get to work on this relatively soon uh, once I start to do get the species, but this is our Titanic exhibit. So I'm hoping to have some species that are found around the wreckage of the Titanic. So probably like John Dory's and stuff, I think. Uh, but those guys are going to be right in there. And then that takes you to this lovely little iceberg. And then the, we're going to have like signage all throughout here. Kind of talking about like all about like, you know, the Arctic Oceans and the Antarctic Oceans. Talking about how like icebergs form, all that stuff. And then the animals that live on there. So these guys are a little bit oversized, I apologize. But we do have puffins. Uh, we have puffins and uh, razor bills. Yeah, we have razor bills in here too. So I was super excited to get these again from the waterfowl event. So that was super fun. But really awesome species just to have in here. I think they're Atlantic puffins. And yeah, hopefully gunning for the Christmas event. We are going to be hopefully getting some lovely penguins uh gen 2 specifically so that'll be super fun uh all throughout here again i'm gonna have this be kind of like the saltwater area i do want a lot more room for saltwater fish but we'll be doing that relatively soon i have a few small tanks in here uh so of course showing off what you could do with the aquaria pack uh lots of small really useful items in here um just some really cool fish too so i have a whole bunch of seahorses this is like my Pacific Invertebrates tank. I still got to work on getting some coral in there, though. But then over here, and I'll turn on the light for you guys. Uh, this is going to be our sea lion show. So that's going to be walled off right there. And then this is where you could actually see the sea lion show if we actually did have sea lions. So ignoring that, we're just going to pop back over here. And then we could actually take the tour going down here. Uh, you could see that these are going to be looks into the tanks over here. Hopefully, we'll get some sharks in here. I would like sand tiger sharks eventually, but you could see those right there. Then we have an Indo-Pacific reef tank. Again, I don't really have too many fish. I think I only have, like, liar tail anthias and mandarin fish in there. Very cool collection, I know. Uh, so you make your way down another hallway. I'll cover that up right over there. You got some last looks into the tank. And then you're finally brought out to over here. Yeah, this is going to be the big room right over here. So obviously you could come right over here. Go to the touch tank. Visit the horseshoe crabs, the Jonah crabs, lobsters, all that stuff. And then you could also come over here to the actual Amazon tank. So I have to give a huge shout out to Mr. Nicholas Lion Rider who kind of conceptually came up with all this cool stuff. Uh, I kind of fleshed it out on my own end. 
but it was super cool just to see like his blueprint over here and how we're able to really manipulate that. So of course we have our Arapaima, Paku, Red-Tailed Catfish, we have Ripsaw Catfish, and then you can see I got to work on some tanks in here. So ideally this would be like a flooded forest, so the water level in this tank specifically would go up and down. Over here I do have our little Amazons, so we do have angelfish, neon tetras, we have some shrimps and stuff in here. It's just a really, really nice active tank that's going to hopefully have a lot of life in it. I also have some smaller tanks as well, just in case if we do get anything, we're already prepared for it. And this is sort of set up like a research base in the Amazon, so I thought that was kind of cool. And again, here we have another look into the actual Amazon Giants tank. So you could actually see that the catfish have a little bit of an area to retreat towards, so I think that's super fun. Uh, but that is really it. Um, we also have this uh, look under the sea lion tank area, so that's going to be super cool just to get another view in there. And once you're done over there, you come over here, and this is a part that's pretty much done. This is our freshwater section, uh, and I'm super excited about it. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of different tanks in here. Again, axolotls, axolotls, uh, we have giant water bugs, we have our large Japanese rice fish in there. Uh, we have two big tanks in here, we have the giants of Asia. So we have snakeheads in there, and we also have a larger North American tank right there. For when we do get paddlefish and stuff eventually. Bosomani rainbow fish, we have bullfrogs in there. I'm super happy about the bullfrog exhibit, look at these guys. But, again, Danube river tank. A whole bunch of different things. Look at that. That's a little coin thing. Goron made that. Super cool. Uh, but yeah, essentially all of our fish from the event, which was the, uh, you know, National Parks event, they're all in here. Uh, so they're just chilling like a villain. We have Nile Monitor, Ninja Shrimp. Uh, we got Fiddler Crabs and Ecuadorian Hermit Crabs from the actual pet store event. So that was cool. But that is really it, my friends, for everything in here. Um, obviously it's a whole lot of small stuff, but I hope you guys were able to take away at least some of the stuff that I'm working on. And obviously I'm kind of doing stuff at my own pace for here, not really doing speed builds because I feel like for a project like this specifically, I'm not really able to lend myself to the right creativity for that. But I hope you guys were able to see everything that's happening with Hope Harbor Zoo right now. I will have an update relatively soon. Uh, once I do start building for Island of Color a little bit more. But I do want to thank you guys one last time for even stopping by if you did enjoy it. Be sure to check out the rest of the Hope Harbor Zoo playlist. Uh, lots of really fun episodes in there. ZSU has been such a blast to play through. Especially now. Uh, very fun just to kind of handle everything. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, and I can't wait to see you all in the next episode. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now. Wonderful day.